In this video, we're going to have a quick look at poetry and how to analyze and make sense of some of it. The first thing we are going to look at is the rhyme scheme or pattern. To work out the rhyme scheme, we look at the last word of each line and we give a letter to each sound we find. We always start with a letter A. Once we find the next sound, we call that line B. If we then find another sound further down the line that rhymes with our A line, we also call that line A. This way we work out the scheme. Some of the most common schemes are AABB, ABAB, ABCD, ABBA, or ABAA. Thick by Shel Silverstein. I cannot go to school today, said little Piggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks, I've counted sixteen chicken pox. And there's one more, that's seventeen. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue, it might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke, I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in, my back is wrenched, my ankle's sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains, my nose is cold, my toes are numb, I have a sliver in my thumb, my neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper when I speak, my tongue is filling up my mouth, I think my hair is falling out, my elbow's bent, my spine ain't straight, my temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk, I cannot hear, there is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye, I'm going out to play. Now if we think about that poem, we find a couple of things that we don't quite get. So there's two lines in this poem that don't necessarily rhyme in the traditional sense. My back is wrenched, my ankles sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains. In those two lines, we are not looking at the end of the words at the end of the line, sprained and rains. We are actually listening to the A sound right in the middle of the words. And that is where the rhyme comes in for those two lines. The same happens for the next two lines. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. We are looking more at the ow sound and not the th or the t at the end. Therefore, for this poem, we can say the rhyme scheme is A-A-B-B with a rhyming triplet at the end. That means the last three lines rhyme at the end. We have some different parts of a poem. So the lines of a poem are organized into stanzas. Stanzas can also be known as verses. And these are similar to our paragraphs in a story. So each one has a start, a middle and an end in a stanza. It makes sense. Often we leave lines between stanzas so that they stand out. Most of the time, a stanza has four lines. In a poem, we also refer to our lines by number. If you look at most poems when they're written, especially in books or even in your exams, on the left hand side, they will have line numbers. I haven't included it in this presentation, but most of the time just count the line. And if you ask a question on a specific line, you will be asked to refer to line two, line six, line 15. We also have special names for different number of lines that are in a stanza. So two lines are called a couplet, three lines is a triplet, or if it's a three line poem, it's a haiku. Four lines are called quatrains, eight lines are called octaves, and 14 lines are a sonnet.
In poetry, we make a lot of use of figurative language. This gives our poems rhythm, allows our poems to rhyme. It engages all our senses when reading poetry and helps to capture the reader or listener's attention. Not going into figurative language in this presentation, that will be its own separate presentation. But whenever you read or listen to a poem, try and find the different figures of speech and work out what they do for the poem. How do they make the poem better?